Is there a basketball hoop on your tree? Yeah, there's two. <laughs> <laughs> we used to always have this game, like double hoop. <laughs> the, the, the higher hoop was more points, and then if you could somehow manage to get both in one shot, you just automatically won the game. I guess we'll just start putting this new 36 on. Yeah, so that's the plan, huh? What do we got currently and what are you swapping it out for? So this is early pre-production 36. Been riding this for quite a while now. And just excited to uh, get a little bit of color and fully fully dialed in production model going. Oh, sweet. Is that the, the limited root beer color there? The root beer. Nice. You want to go ahead and do some Q and A stuff now? Or? Yeah, I can probably just uh, filter them throughout. We had a ton of questions for you, man. <laughs> oh boy. We had a lot of questions on your other bike. Is it a raw Madonna? Yeah, Madonna V2. Gotcha. And what's this one now that you're working on? This is a Santa Cruz Tall Boy. So the Madonna, pretty big, long travel bike. 160 170 front so that's gonna be a 38 for sure nice. this bike is 120 ish in the back and a 140 36 in the front okay so nice. perfect for aggressive trail bike all right this was a, a pretty pressing question from steel city media how does jordy deal with all the fan mail does he have a pa an agent what's his appearance day rate asking for a friend <laughs> <laughs> for those that don't know jobo is uh steel city media or the guys that did the this is pd and the gamble movie and a few other little bits oh and then we got the the classic question from lou talks mtb with what's your favorite dessert oh that's a good one like in lockdown i've been trying not to buy a bunch of dessert yeah. But it hasn't slowed me down at all, so I've been making waffles late at night. <laughs> nice. And then putting like peanut butter and honey on them. I'm pretty big into strawberry rhubarb pie. Like I think that's my go-to. Not like it's Ooh. everywhere, but. All right, I think we got. Yeah, we got a few questions from Jordan Pierre Lowe, but he asked, "What do you love most about your job?" The people I get to work with, really. Hmm. I've made a lot of lasting friendships in this job and it's, it's really pretty cool like to be able to balance my enjoyment of tech stuff and deal with people that I really like that's that's pretty awesome for me that's awesome that coincides with oh yeah uh Troy J Hall said was your start as a suspension guru with bikes or with motorcycles I mean, like most people, I started on a bike because I was just a little kid, but... So I raced downhill stuff and some other things for a while and then actually transitioned to moto and road raced for a while and ran a motorcycle shop. Okay, pause this. I don't want anybody to see this. Okay. I didn't bring all the tools. Actually, you can show that. I don't care. Yeah, so... I think the suspension stuff started with moto. Just because that's the period of time that I was running a moto shop and racing. And that kind of kick-started it, but it, I definitely didn't know much. It was pretty basic. I still don't know much, but I'm getting better. <laughs> if you don't know much, then the rest of us are in serious trouble. I, I don't think most people know anything. I definitely <laughs> it's one of those things that the more you know the less you know yeah that's that's true what is that like dunning kruger effect or something like that yeah so i've pulled my old fork pulled the crown race off and popped it onto the new one with a rubber mallet because i don't have all my tools here then measured the steer tube on the old fork marked it on the new one now we're gonna cut it sweet um so yeah, and then I really had a very base understanding of suspension when I started at Fox. And 
my boss at the time, Fitzy, we knew each other from moto stuff and from mountain bike racing and just being Santa Cruz people. He pretty much brought me in and started teaching me. And then I guess it was something I enjoyed. So I put a lot of effort into it and just started doing my own stuff, figuring things out for myself. Listen to everybody, but figure it out for yourself. Now we're just taking the burrs off the outside of the steer tube here. These things are really cool. Just yeah, that's a sweet tool. I've never seen little that. Cutter. Um, dude, what you just said was kind of perfectly coinciding with another question that I can't find right now, but someone asked if you had any advice for a college kid wanting to get into work similar to you. Do you have anything additional that you'd say to that? Stay in school. <laughs> I mean, if you wanted to be a baker, what would you do? You'd start learning how to bake. And you'd, you know, you'd read things and you'd study and you'd look it up. It's no different in the bike world. Just put some work into it. Okay, we're kind of ready to put this thing in, I think. Yeah, so, I don't know. I mean, if you don't know anything, you should probably start in a bike shop. Or start working on your own stuff. There's tons of stuff online. And while it's not all correct, it is something. And it will get you going in the right direction, I think. M. Hodecker asked, is there any material out there, articles or manuals that you'd recommend to learn about shocks or forks to better understand them or any online classes? Mm, I don't know about online. Uh... There's a guy named Paul Feed that runs a suspension company called Race Tech in Southern California. And his book was one of the first I read. And I thought it did an amazing job of explaining suspension theory and practice. So I think it's called Suspension Bible or something. But the guy's name is Paul Feed and the company's Race Tech. Uh, online, I don't know. There's a good dude in Portugal. The website's like Andre XTR. So if you're really learning, then that's a that's a cool website to go look at. He does a lot of kinematic reviews and uh, explains the basics of suspension. Okay, Phil Rossetti asked, can you give us some details about the new rad forks and shocks that we've been seeing on pro bikes? Yes. Um, we can start with 36, which is completely new chassis. Um, has a bunch of cool new features. It implements a floating axle like the 40 did, which basically makes up for any indiscrepancies in hub width. Uh, you can do QR or bolt-on. I really like the clean bolt-on look. Um, it's got new arch design, which is basically purely functional. It's the lightest way to make a stiff brake arch. On the back of the forks, there's these bulges in the back that lead up to the bleeder. And those are designed that as the fork compresses and pressurized, it'll let oil drain up the back of the fork and recirculate through the bushing and foam ring. So it's an attempt to get oil back up there, which in years past was really hard to do because the bushing sits here and kind of traps all the oil in the lowers. But this kind of lets you help get oil up above that top bushing to keep friction down. Uh, these forks also have a new thing where one stanchion is longer than the other, which is the air side. And that's to make a larger negative spring so that we can get a much suppler initial stroke uh, without having to change the positive volume so we can still tune the fork to lighter riders but get a really good action off the top. Uh, both 36, 38, and both, all three. 36, 38, and 40 come with the new uh, Grip 2 damper that has the VVC included for high-speed rebound and for high-speed compression. Makes it very tunable and lets you run high-speed damping without getting the harshness of the kind of the classic high-speed adjuster. I'm pretty excited to go ride this one. Nice. And so the rad stuff was essentially for racers to have 
pre-production and and work on the development side of it yeah our rad project has always been trying to get product in the very early stages of development so that it's it's basically what we're gonna be selling but we're still working out some of the kinks so then we can work out things like range of adjustment for the damper or air spring mod uh air spring ratios like how many spacers you're going to run is the negative spring big enough is the positive spring big enough certain little bits like that and then durability as well this is another thing when people transfer air you'll see a lot of people doing this hmm. and you're really missing the transfer port the transfer port is in is it's only about a centimeter above and normally you can just push it down and you'll hear it oh okay so that's transferring the air right now and you don't have to do it. You can just go ride your bike, but your pressure is going to be off. So every time you make a pressure change, you should cycle the fork or shock, get the pressures equalized, and then go. I think our whole goal with these videos is to get people to be able to think on their own. It really isn't that hard to get the basics. Like, we just put this fork on don't really know where it's going i'm by myself and this isn't ideal but you slide that o-ring down lean back a little bit to take weight off it and there's your sag right the o-ring set now you just measure that if it's right or wrong you want i run about 15 percent sag somewhere between 15 and 20 is probably going to be good for aggressive riders so set your sag first set your compressions in the middle set your rebound really it's just about again like we beat this to death but go out and experiment and that's how you'll find your proper settings you see that's bouncing back a little bit fast so we we'd, we'd probably slow that down one and you know it's fast because it's kind of hopping off the ground a little bit yeah you give it a good strong push and get your hands back off of it quickly and then you kind of don't want it to bounce up off the ground. But again, that's just a, just a starting point. Go out, ride your trail, make one adjustment at a time, keep track of what you're doing, and that'll get you in a pretty good starting position. Sweet. That is always the basics. You start with sag, no matter what. You can change it from there, but it's always where you start. Dude, this was super helpful for me and i'm sure everyone else has gained some some insight from this so thanks as always for doing this we'll just uh keep letting everyone know anytime we do this again whether it's questions for jordy or anyone that um we're doing upcoming calls with so just be following along we'll do more q a's like this in the future yeah appreciate it all jordy thanks for thanks for walking through it you guys are all welcome awesome thanks man we'll talk to you soon cool see you guys